again at Wilderway Farm and today we are going to learn about another animal that we have here on the farm which are pygora goats. Now these gorgeous curly haired girls are my pygora does. I got three of them and they are new um, so they are still pretty unsure about me. They don't know if they like me yet. Once in a while, they'll let me pet them. But a lot of times they keep their distance, which is very typical um, of a doe or any goat, really, that moves home. As an adult, it can take them a while to warm up, like, like months. It can really take them quite some time. Um, I bought them out of a ranch in California that was selling their whole little herd of pygoras um, because they just needed to downsize. But they originally came from Hawks Mountain Ranch in Oregon, which is a very prestigious pygora farm. Um, it's probably one of the top ones in our country. Lots of champion pygoras come out of that farm. See, she's warming up. Oh, she's getting there. So they're very well bred. And I'm pretty proud of them because there are not many, if any, I don't know of any other Pygora breeders in Arizona. So I'm pretty excited to have them here. I'm pretty excited to give other people the opportunity um, to own them and show them um, for kids to show them in 4-H. I just feel like this is such a fun breed for 4-H kids. So pygoras are used for lots of different things. They're kind of a multi-purpose goat. Um, obviously, the number one use is gonna be fiber. So pygoras have this gorgeous, gorgeous fiber. So as you can see here, a little close up of, of the fiber, it is rather beautiful. It is soft, so, so soft. Um, you know, feels like petting a bunny rabbit. Um, and just trying to show you guys a little bit more up close. This beautiful fiber here. Thanks, sweet girl. So pygoras were originally a cross of a pygmy goat and an angora. Um, so if you don't know what an angora goat is, they're a larger breed of goat um, that have gorgeous long locks of fiber and they make um, a kind of fiber called mohair and you know they, they turn it, they spin it and they turn it into all kinds of you know yarns and crafting material and it's very very soft, um, it's very expensive it's very high quality it's just gorgeous gorgeous stuff not itchy ever like wool can be and um, so then pygmy goats are the smallest breed of meat goat um, they're usually kept as pets but technically a pygmy goat is a meat goat and so that's what they were originally crossed between and um, as time went on they are considered purebred now um, you know people rarely breed pygmy to angora anymore. It's just pygora to pygora to pygora. The pygoras have their own registry and their own breed standards and are really a breed all of their own at this point. I did have somebody ask me one time if I need to breed back to angoras to keep the integrity of the fleece and the answer is no. Um, this breed is um, pretty old and it's well established and um, a well-bred pygora um, bred to another quality pygora is going to keep the integrity of that fleece all on their own and you know you just continue to pick out um, good breeding stock and you'll continue to get um, gorgeous pygoras. So there's three different kinds of fiber that a pygora goat can have. They can have a type A, a type B, or a type C. 
Um, I have two goats that are type B and one that is type C. So a type A is going to be more like a straight Angora's fiber. It's going to be mohair. You know, need to be sheared um, twice a year. A type B, which is what this one that I'm petting and I'm still learning, I'm still trying to remember their names. Like six of them came at the same time and I'm keeping their original names. Um, and so sometimes I forget, but this is Paloma. She is has type B, so she has a mixture of cashmere and mohair. So you can take a brush and you can brush out um, her coat and it, basically that pulls out the cashmere and then um, you would go ahead and shear after that and then you would get the mohair from that. So it's it's a, actually a really nice mixture of fiber. It's not it's not a bad thing to have the mixture. It just adds more variety and um, can actually make it softer. So it's it's pretty awesome. And then type C, which I do have a type C. She's over here nibbling on my coat. Um, so this is Camilla is her name. She is my type C. Now I can barely tell the difference. Like I said, I'm very new um, to Pygoras. I don't see a a big difference in their coat but technically she would have more um, cashmere so she would have a little bit more of like a brushable or pluck they call it plucking so it's it's a special tool and you actually like pluck the cashmere out as I said before I am NOT an expert on fiber or shearing I'm just getting started so I'm hoping that you guys can enjoy these videos and enjoy learning with me as I do my research and I try things and through trial and error hopefully I become an expert so as you can see in this video they are pretty sweet I'm pretty impressed with the temperament so far they are cautious. Um, they're very thoughtful goats. They seem very smart and it's kind of slow to act. They think about what they're gonna do before they act. And it definitely has taken them a while to warm up to me. You know, they're not big on new people. They're not big on busy. They came from a farm with like no kids and um, it's very different than my farm. So it's probably been a little overwhelming. Like when I bring treats out here, they want the treats, but like with all the commotion they don't really want to be pet but when it's a nice lazy Sunday afternoon and all the other girls are just kind of lazing around they'll come up to me and get scratches so I've been pretty impressed with the temperament um, they really are just really sweet goats um, and I'm just super excited for kidding season all of these girls are bred and I'm just I'm really excited for the kids that will grow up here and grow up with us and um, I mean, obviously we're not going to keep them all, but just getting to bond with them young, I'm looking forward to that. You can definitely bond with an older goat, but it just takes a little more time for them to warm up to you. But we are definitely getting there. See, I'm growing on them. They're going to love me. So when I said that they are kind of a multi-purpose goat, by that I meant that some people milk them. Um, I have heard that you can get up to a quart a day um, out of these pretty ladies. I probably won't milk them because I have a ton of dairy goats, but I have heard that you can milk them and you can eat them. Um, we also won't be doing that um, just because we have beef and pigs and um, we don't make a habit of eating our goats. But they are technically edible. They, you know, they are mixed with a, a meat goat. So they can kind of be used for all purposes. Um, another thing that I really like about the Pygoras is, you know, with a dairy breed, the weathers or the castrated males can be sold um, as pets. And we sell them for $75 here. Um, and they make fantastic pets. But I love that with the Pygoras, they're when you weather a pygora, you're still gonna get fantastic fiber. So while it's a pet, you can still shear and sell that fiber or you can shear and use it. And um, you know, they can still be making you a profit, even, even the weathers. Now we're gonna meet the individual goats. This here is Paloma. So she is 
basically a brown a chocolate or a brown um, fiber is what she's got going on here um, I've heard it called red as well um, she has type B beautiful fleece she is I would say the second friendliest you saw I was just able to pet her so she's getting there with me um, she's very curious she doesn't always like to be pet but she likes to come up and see what I'm doing. This here is Carlotta. Nice sweet girl. And I love, I love a lot of things about the look of her. I love um, that she's black first of all and it gives her this like really pretty gray fiber. Um, and I love her floppy ears. The Angoras have floppy ears and obviously the Pygmies do not. And so they kind of have like a mixture but her ears are nice and floppy and I just think they're just adorable. She also has type B fiber. Very pretty coloring on it. Like I just feel like that would make just a really gorgeous yarn. That's that sweet girl. And here we have Camilla. She has a special pink collar on because she's been claimed by one of my kids as a special goat. Hi Camilla. <laughs> and she's the friendliest one. She's the first one that let me pet her. She's still very specific about when she wants to be pet. Um, sometimes she is so unfriendly and doesn't want anything to do with me, and other times she's like the sweetest. Um, so she's kind of like a sour patch for kid. First she's sweet and she's sour, but we love her. And she's gorgeous. She's got this brown um, fiber, but she's also got white spots, which is a little bit hard to see when it's grown out and not shorn, but. She's got white spots, um, which is a very fun gene to have. It's not super common. So I love that about her. So now we're over here with the boys, um, the stinky, stinky boys. They just moved back over here by the girls. I had moved them to a bigger pen, but they kept escaping and coming back to their old pen. So we just need to build a bigger shelter, but we're gonna just let them stay in here because they seem to really like it. Um, so, I wanted you to meet the Pygora men. So this white fella is named Fumbles. And we did rename him that because he reminded my kids. Oh, I'm sorry. For all the shaking, it's, it's wildfire here. He just can't stop jumping on me. He's so stinky, but so friendly. I know, we love you, mister. So, my kids named him that after the abominable snow snowman. Um, so he's a pretty sweet guy too. As you can see with a white goat, he is just like covered in pee. So they're all this covered in pee. You can just see it better on him. <laughs> so if you ever think about petting a buck, maybe put some gloves on first. But he's gorgeous. Um, he's got type B fiber as well. And they were recently shorn. So Obviously, you can tell that their fiber is not quite as long. They're just over here. The boys are obsessed with the girls. That's why they, I think that's why they just like to be over here. They just like to sit over here and obsess, even though nobody's in heat. Everybody's already bred. So this other guy, this black and gray guy back here, is what they what they named him. Chunkamonka, I think is what they called him. My kids named him that. I'm not. It, it's some some handsome goat character on a show or something. Um. So he's a beautiful boy as well. So these are the, the daddies. These are the Pygora daddies. And we cannot wait until March. And we're gonna have some Pygora babies. So. Pygora goats. It's a new breed for us. It's a new breed for many. It's not a super common breed, but so far I'm really, really loving them. They're very neat, um, very unique, very beautiful, and very fun. So basically everything you want in a goat. If you're enjoying these videos, please give them a thumbs up. Push the like button. That helps us out. And also subscribe so you won't miss anything.